The Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development is in the process of developing a national youth service program which will ensure compulsory military training for all the youth in the country. The program targets primary seven leavers, senior four and senior six students, plus those leaving tertiary institutions. Whereas the program is still just a plan, the Gender Ministry has proposed a 5 billion shillings budgetary allocation for the program slated to begin in July. According to Dennis hamson the NRM Parliamentary Caucus spokesperson, government derives its mandate from the national constitution for the implementation of the project. This uh, resolution on the national service for the young people of Uganda is derived from uh, Article 17, Clause 2 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, which states categorically clear that um, it is the duty of every able-bodied Ugandan to undergo military training for the defense of the Constitution, including protection of the territorial integrity of Uganda whenever called upon. The youth will undergo a one-year intensive training at the National Leadership Institute Changkwanzi in the rule of law, democratization, military training, among others. A certificate will be awarded upon completion. This means that whoever is joining public or private employment will be required to present this certificate. While human rights defenders and opposition politicians have read mischief into this proposal, Others opine that this is a good step in the right direction. This will help us as a nation because there's something that military training does to a person, especially when he's still young. It instills discipline. Whereas we are agitating for skills development among the youth, I think we need to make a very clear distinction between the necessity for vocational training and military indoctrination. In a country where there is a thin line between the state and the ruling party, the fears that this could be used to front the NRM ideology rather than the country's values. If they make it nationalistic, where even the opposition can go and talk to the, uh, talk to the students... <laughs> just forget. They just want to go and uh, manipulate their mind. That's, all. That's what they do. All Ugandans irrespective of their political affiliations, whether NRM, FDC, UPC, DP, can access facilities available at the National Leadership Institute. Chamkwanzi. The Director of Foundation for Human Rights Initiative, a rights organization, Livingstone Sewanyina, says the government's program is misguided and does not address the immediate needs of the youth. When it failed, they introduced patriotism clubs, and even the patriotism clubs have not made any significant difference. And now they are back to square one. I think what is most appropriate is for government to invest in programs that would yield jobs, making it compulsory. And of course that is in conflict with one's freedom of choice. In the 1990s, government introduced a political and semi-military education program which it said was to disarm and reintegrate the general public through education after civil war. Chakam Chaka, as it was called then, however, received a backlash from the public who said the ruling government was using it to curtail dissent and perpetuate its ideology. The Chakam Chaka that I used to know is associated with the party of NRM. And since the Chakam Chaka is intended to regiment the minds uh, of the people. It cannot work in Uganda of today. They are making it compulsory. And uh, of course that is in conflict with one's freedom of choice. When NTV sought out the views of some Ugandans, this is what they had to say. The skill would not help. Is the skill going to give me money? If I learn how to box somebody, maybe in a bar, is that, is that, is that a job? How to hmm? Because I may go to the bar when I have my skill and the other one also has a skill, we shall fight until death. It will not help. Instead, they should see some other uh, sector which can uh, acquire many youths. This new move cements an emerging practice in public institutions where employees are subjected to military training. Currently, over 300 youth entrants in the Ministry of Internal Affairs are undergoing military training in Bunyoro sub-region. And yet with just three months to its proposed implementation period, the National Curriculum Development Center is yet to start on the job of developing a syllabus for what will be taught 
Okay, we have not yet been formally uh, told about the program, but of course as the National Curriculum Development Center, it's our work to develop curricula. If passed and adopted by cabinet, Uganda will join Rwanda, Sudan, Nigeria, China and Israel, where it is compulsory for youth to acquire military training. Sharon Hochre, NTV.